nutrition. So every Sunday, or I try to do it every Sunday, um, I like to prep food and I have my weekly grocery list in my phone so I can get in and out of the grocery store in under 30 minutes and I don't get tempted with things that I don't wanna buy. I know right where everything is and I stay there. Oh. My oven's preheated. Okay, so the things we're gonna start with today are carbs, veggies, and proteins. I pretty much prep the same thing every week, but I like to have a variety. Uh, and sometimes I'll switch out maybe like a red skin potato for a golden potato or things along those lines, but I keep it pretty simple. Simple, I find, is best, and it keeps me feeling the best as well. So for carbs, I start with red skin potatoes. So I'm gonna cut these and roast them in the oven just with a little bit of salt and pepper. Sometimes I do olive oil, not a whole lot because I don't want the extra fat. From there, I like to do jasmine rice. So this is what I have left for today. I guess I need to get another bag. So I'll cook some jasmine rice. Then I will also roast sweet potatoes. So I like to have a variation of potatoes. So it's either sweet potatoes and red potatoes, red potatoes and golden potatoes, golden and sweet, whatever it is. I just like to at least have two. Sometimes I do all three on Sundays, depending on how I'm feeling. And then I finish with red lentil pasta. Um, I think having multiple different types of carbohydrates throughout the week that you can eat just helps you not get sick of your food. If it's in the fridge, it's ready to go, then you're not tempted to eat all of the other processed foods throughout the week that are quick, simple, and easy as well. So one tip that I've learned is I try to look for small sweet potatoes. I used to buy the biggest ones I could possibly find because I was like, oh, more potato. But now I just buy small, more of the smaller ones because it makes it much easier to cut. When you have a really thick potato, they're hard. So trying to get the knife through it can sometimes be challenging. So instead of buying four big ones, just buy eight small ones and it goes much faster when you're cutting them. So I'm gonna start with my sweet potato. Make sure you always wash them. Um, my mom always gets on me about this, but now I'm really weird about it too. So always, always wash your fruits, your veggies, and your potatoes. So I'm gonna wash it. And then I just like to cut it up. I'm no master chef. Um, I have one knife I like. Sweet potatoes are hard. So I always just cut the ends off first. And then I stain it on the side because it helps me put a little bit of muscle behind it. And really, it doesn't matter. Like, if you like them super small, that's fine. Obviously, the smaller you cut them, the faster they're gonna cook. I usually just cut them into little pieces like this. Um, you guys saw in my favorite breakfast what I do with them. I roast them, and then that way, when it's time to eat them in the morning, I just have to toss them in a pan to heat them up to make them crispy. Could microwave them, but always reheating them on the skillet, I think, tastes better. So, smaller size, that way they cook pretty easily. So once you cut them, I add parchment paper to just a baking sheet. And then I just go ahead and I typically fill the entire pan. So I usually buy today about six sweet potatoes. Um, that usually gets us through at least Thursday of the week and I'll fill this entire pan and then roast them. So that's what, once this is full, we'll add it to the oven. So, once your pan's about full, I typically always try to fill my biggest pan because it looks like a lot, but then once I load my plate with the amount of carbs that I eat throughout the week, it turns out to be not as much as I think. So I typically do salt and pepper. Um, so we like the pink Himalayan sea salt and just a little bit. Um, I know some people say not to salt your food, but I've learned is especially when you're sweating a lot, you need to make sure you do have some salt. So I like to just put a little sprinkle on my potatoes and then I know I'm at least getting some salt if I forget to salt my food when I eat it. So now we'll take them and we'll put them in the oven. I have it on 400 and we will let them bake. So now let's talk veggies. So once I prepare all of my carbs, then I typically start on my veggies or sometimes I go vice versa. I do my veggies first and then my carbs, whatever. As long as they both get done and I have food to eat for the week, then I'm happy. So I pretty much buy the same veggies every week. I buy crowns of broccoli. So I always steam these on the stove. So a little bit of water, which you'll see, and steam them for five to seven minutes. And then that way I can either have them with my chicken and my rice or my turkey or whatever, or they're ready to go and I can put them in my eggs in the morning. From there, I like asparagus. So I've been on a big asparagus kick. So I always buy about two of these um, and then I'll cut the bottoms off and then I'll also roast these in the oven at 400 to 415 for about seven minutes, makes it perfect. Uh, I eat these on the side with rice, veggies, or rice, chicken, or I put them in my eggs. So. A lot of this goes in my big breakfast that you guys see that I have after training. Next, I've been on a big pepper kick. 
so they had them for 99 cents each and I like the orange bell peppers. Uh, they add a ton of flavor and then I like the red bell peppers. Last week I got yellow. I didn't really like yellow as much. Um, so we're gonna stay with red. So these I'm gonna roast in the oven as well. I found that's my favorite way to cook them. I'm gonna slice them up. Sometimes I'll leave one not cooked and then I'll just snack on it throughout the day. Uh, almost like a carrot or something like that. It's just crunchy and it tastes good. Otherwise I roast them, I toss them in my eggs, I put them on our tacos. I even throw them in our marinara sauce when we have it with our red lentil pasta. So it just adds a little bit of extra flavor and keeps the meals changing so you're not just eating the same thing every single day. So I usually cut about five to six peppers. They last us, I don't know, three or four days because we put them in everything. They're really good for you. It's just a really good change. Um, even if you don't buy them every week, buy them every other week. And for me, you'll notice like some of them are much bigger, some of them are much smaller. Size doesn't matter. I'm not eating them just by themselves. I'm putting them in tons of things. So whether it's turkey meatloaf, my eggs, whatever, um, they're gonna roast and cook down a little bit. So then when I toss them in, I don't even notice if it's like a bigger or a smaller pepper. I just try to cut them efficiently and not waste a ton of time on cutting my peppers. So I'll pop them into the oven. I'll roast them on 400 for about 20 minutes or until they start to look soft and that they've kind of cooked all the way through. All right, so let's talk protein. So we've gone through carbs, we've gone through veggies, and now we're gonna talk protein. I like to rotate my protein because I get really sick of eating the same thing. Um, I also watch how much red meat I eat. I used to eat red meat almost every night, and then I noticed like I just didn't really feel that great. So I've switched and I kind of rotate it. So last week I had a little bit more red meat. This week I'm not doing as much. Um, and I sometimes like to have a cheat meal and a burger on the weekend. So I eat less red meat during the week so I can go out and get a big juicy burger on a Saturday night. So this week what I bought, I've switched over to thinly sliced chicken breast cutlets instead of full chicken breast. I rotate between this and chicken thighs. So last week we might've had chicken thighs. This week we're gonna go with just chicken breast. Just always keep switching it. That helps you not get sick of your food. So I will grill these uh, and then these go in multiple different things. So once it's grilled, I can use it with my red lentil pasta and marinara sauce and peppers. I can use it with rice and broccoli or rice and asparagus. I also will slice it up and then toss it in a skillet, add a little bit of homemade salsa or salsa that I bought at the store with it, and then we'll make tacos out of it, and that's how we season it. So there's endless things you can do with chicken. The next is natural ground turkey. So I won't go for the 93.7. I like to have just a little bit of fat uh, with my meat. I try to keep it right at that 93.7 instead, instead of the 99 slash 1%. Um, but with this same thing. So we'll either make turkey tacos, we'll make turkey burgers, turkey meatloaf, or we'll just put ground turkey on the stove and then add marinara sauce to it. So just always knowing that's why I've got two pounds of it because we'll do multiple things with it this week. Um, but just, you can even do turkey chili. Um, just having different ideas, different recipes, so that way you do not get burned out. And you're also having a little bit of flavor without, just in a natural way. So it doesn't have to be a ton of seasoning or a ton of sauces or anything like that, but just a little bit of flavor so you do enjoy your meals and you don't feel like you're just eating cardboard at every single meal. So this is just a look into my weekly meal prep. Uh, typically what I would prep for carbs, what I eat all week long, what I prep for veggies and protein, and just always trying to get creative with new recipes. So if you have any recipes, comment below and let me know. With anything that I have, I would love to try them. But right now my macros for my protein, I was eating a little bit more. So I was eating a little bit more than my body weight, like 1.8 times, I believe. And I just don't feel as good. So I've actually cut my protein back just a little bit. So I'm sitting right around 125 grams of protein a day. I like to be within plus or minus five to seven grams. So if at the end of the day I'm five grams short, I'm not going through my pantry or my fridge or trying to figure out how I can get those five grams, I'm close enough and I'm happy with that. For my carbs, I like to be over 300 if it's a heavy training day. Um, just depends, but I wanna make sure that I'm at least at 280 grams for the day, closer to 300. And then for my fats, I tend to like to eat a higher fat diet, but it doesn't make me feel good in the gym. So I like to make sure that I'm filling my meals with good lean protein and lots and lots of carbs. So for my fats, I like to keep them, you know, in when I'm not, training super, super hard, around 70. Uh, nothing too high, nothing too low. 
they will go down to about 55 and my carbs will up to closer to 350 as I get towards the summer and I start training for the CrossFit Games. So that's just kind of where I'm sitting at for right now. I'm not counting diligently. I'm not tracking every single day, but I can eyeball things. I've got my scale over there if I need to check something out, but I will start counting here again soon. I hope that helps. Just remember, keep changing things up buy lots of different kinds of veggies so you're not eating broccoli at every single meal, buy many different kinds of proteins, get creative, try to think of new recipes, and that will help you keep your healthy eating on track because then you're not burned out and like I said, you don't feel like you're eating cardboard every single day. Hopefully this helps you guys. Comment below with any questions that you have or anything else you wanna see.